Welcome to this brief screencast cast on the Browser Object Model, or BOM. The BOM is a JavaScript representation of the actual browser, so you can gain access to certain aspects of the browser. So it allows JavaScript to talk to the browser. Unfortunately, there is no standard browser. Most modern browsers implement similar bombs. So they have a similar concept of window, screen, location, history, navigator, timing, and cookies. But not all browsers are the same, and not all browsers implement all the same features of this. But we're going to just briefly go through some of the features that should appear in modern browsers. If you talk in Internet Explorer uh, version 9 or below, all bets are probably off. Um, older versions of the other browsers also probably don't implement all these features. Um, but the modern ones tend to do a better job of implementing these features. So the first idea is that there's a window that represents the browser's window. Now, all the global things in JavaScripts are actually members of the window object. So you can say things like if you create a, a global variable, it would be window dot that variable name. So they're all actually contained in the window. Uh, you can ask the window what its inner height, inner width is, so you can get a sense of how big the window is. And of course, you can ask for the document that is in the window, which if you saw the other, uh, the DOM screencast, this is how you actually truly get to the document. You should, the full name is window.document, but JavaScript has, allows us to shorten that to just use document. Uh, there's a bunch of methods on the window. You can open a new window, you can close the window, you can move the window, you can resize the window. Uh, again, useful, but maybe not something you need to do all the time. Um, you may want to resize the window, but if you're talking about a, a display device, you may not be able to resize the window. If you're talking about a, a phone, try, you can't resize the browser on a phone um, or a tablet. So some of these are less useful than others. The next concept is the screen. So it's actually inside the window is the screen. You have properties. Uh, you say how wide it is, how high it is. The available width would be does not include any of the browser's toolbars and scroll bars and all that other thing. So the available width and available height. The color depth gives you some sense of how good the display is. Nowadays there are 24 or 32 pixels, uh, bits in depth. Same thing with the pixels. Uh, back in the day you might have found an 8-bit display, but uh, that's pretty much in the long past. We don't have to worry about that. But again, the screen is a little bit, uh, it gives you information about what is available to be seen. It can give your JavaScript an idea of how much color you can use or the variety of things you can use. The location, this represents the current URL that is being displayed in the window by the screen. So you get the properties, so you can say what's the protocol for the current location, so was it an FTP or an HTTP, all those kinds of things, what's the host name in the URL, optional port, if there is a port, the path to the resource being displayed, and importantly for JavaScript, you can get the search, the location search is the query string that is in the URL. So if you want to process that query string from a GET request, you can get it. Now you can't access the post because we're talking client-side uh, browser. The browser does not see the result of a post. That goes to the server. But if you do a GET request, you will see the query string and you can access it in the search property of the location. You can assign a new URL to the location and that will cause the browser to load that page. So it's like you could traverse to another page or something. You could reload the current page. So that's often used if something happens and you want to refresh the screen, you call location reload. You can replace the screen, which would again cause the browser to load the URL that you're replacing. The difference between assign and replace, replace does not add an entry to the history. Assign adds an entry to the browser's history. Speaking of history, that's the next 
thing you can access in the browser, uh, the bomb. It basically is a list, conceptually is a list of the websites or you are locations that have been viewed. There's a back, which will go like, just like pressing the back button. There's a forward, which is just like pressing the forward button. And then there's the go, which allows you to go, in this case, minus four from the current location in history will back up four times. So it's the same as hitting back four times. You can do plus numbers, which is the same as hitting forward a couple of times. Um, so we, you can manipulate what the user sees in JavaScript using the history so you can back up or you can go forward. Um, it does provide a fair amount of power. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure exactly why you would want to use this, but you can if it's useful in your um, JavaScript. The next thing is the navigator, which provides information about the user's browser, so you could find out the app name, so what browser you're running on, what version it's running, whether cookies are enabled for the particular browser. The geolocation feature, if enabled, can give you an indication, give you the latitude and longitude of where the browser thinks it is, and the online property will tell you if the browser is connected to the internet or not. Um, many of these features, but geolocation and cookie enabled, um, you have to actually give permission, the user has to give permission for geolocation. You can, the user can say, no, I don't want to provide geolocation. And then the navigator.geolocation is just going to be undefined or null. So not all these features will necessarily work every time. Um, there's timing. There's two ways of doing timing. The browser, the bomb provides sort of two features. The set interval is if you want to have a function run every 10 seconds, every 10 minutes, whatever, you can call window set interval. You provide the function that you want to run and the number of milliseconds between each run. So it's just going to say every three minutes I want to do something. I would say that function and then milliseconds for three minutes is 180,000. So, and then if you want to clear or stop that thing, you would then assign the results of that set interval to a variable. You then can call window clear interval with that var, the variable, and then that would stop the timer. It would stop running that again and again. Sort of the other side is you can have a countdown timer, which is set timeout. So you say, I want to run this function in so many milliseconds and it will run once. The clear timeout will, if the time, if the number of milliseconds hasn't occurred yet, clear timeout will stop that function from running. Um, so you have the, I want to run this repeatedly, and then I have a countdown timer and say, I want to execute this in so many minutes, uh, or seconds, milliseconds. So two very nice timing features. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is cookies. Basically, this is slightly older than the local storage, which HTML5 has provided, but let's talk about cookies. Basically, it allows you to store user information in a web page. Their name value pairs, they're a string. Um, you can set an expires time, which will then, if the, if the current time is beyond the expires time, then that cookie is not valid and you don't, it doesn't exist. To get to the cookies, you ask the document, the DOM, for the property cookie. That returns a big long string uh, that can have multiple name value pairs in it. Um, and to set it, you set the value, the property cookie. So if you want to retain the previous cookies, you need to update your piece of that cookie string. So there might be multiple cookies in that string, but you get the string, the entire string back. So manipulating the cookie string, if it's a complicated site, could could have some issues um, because the there might be other things in the document cookie, and you have to main you should maintain the other elements in the just don't overwrite them because they may be useful in other app applications. And so that's really quick look at the bomb. So does JavaScript does have the ability to access and work on control, to some sense, the browser itself. Um, you've got access to uh, 
the window, which stores all the variables in the JavaScript. The window has a document. Um, we've got screen. We've got the navigator, which tells us about the browser. We've got location, which is the URL of the page that's being viewed. And we have cookies and timers, and we have uh, the navigator. So thank you for your attention.